turn this off real quick. All right. Good morning, everyone. Well, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> you know, I'm tired. <laughs> oh, at least you're starting it off right. <clears throat> yeah. Good morning, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> it's not only my videos. <laughs> Thank you for joining us with the uh, <clears throat> PR Think Tank. Every Monday at 9 p.m., we have a decent topic today. I think so. How yeah. to approach a dent. Of course. Uh, Ryan, you want to introduce yourself, as always? Ryan from RPS Dent Repair out of Baltimore. Uh, Chris, Dentless Touch. Looks like we got a few people watching here, so uh, kudos to everyone that jumped on uh, early. Don't Definitely. forget to give us a little thumbs up. If you can, at the beginning, that'd be great. <laughs> uh, so let's go over the tools like we always do. Ryan, you're consistent. Do you have right. any? I do. I came prepared, and it's it's a recap. <clears throat> I was going to – I had something new coming out, but I'm still trying to figure it out. So next week I'll probably have some something new, uh, something that's been re that's not really released yet either. So I've got a tool that – it's two tools together. Okay. Um, that I actually used today on aluminum roof rail on an older Lexus convertible. Uh, yeah, you were talking to me about And that. I'm using this tool. It's not really made for this, but I'm actually liking the weight, the balance of it. Using the dingbat that we talked <laughs> about last week. I got to bring this thing back on, man. For $50. $50 for this tool. You can't even buy a tool for $50 right now. So... And I've got it teamed up with Dave Strings' blending tip. Um, one of the key factors that they really were, Chad from Endeavor Tools really brought into this thing was the recess for the O-ring. And then Dave Strings' O-ring, it fits perfect. The balance on this, this is it. I am eliminating all the blending hammers out of my truck. <laughs> and this is going to be the, the something with, I don't know. I'm not the best blender with a blending hammer. I'll be honest with you. Just not a very great blender. Um, I can blend with a VIP and a knockdown like nobody else. But this thing today, a game changer. So if you guys don't have this, EndeavorTools.com, for $50, it, it's, it's ridiculous. Right. Did you get one yet, Chris? So uh, <clears throat> I ordered uh, three. Cause it's just so inexpensive. Um, and, uh, I don't know. I talked to him actually today. I called him, asked him how everything is doing. Uh, and I asked him about the, uh, the ding bat and I talked to uh, Dave Johnson a lot and it's just one of those tools where it sounds like that. You just got to try it out. Yep. <laughs> he just, he's like, I can't really describe it, but I tend to just go to it a lot more. Me personally, uh, just because they're fifty dollars, honestly, I'll probably go to it just in case. You know, if I leave it somewhere or if it, one of mm -hmm. those, uh, uh, I don't know, areas. And for one, it looks cool to just be beating on someone's car with a bat. <laughs> so uh, I, I can't wait to the conversation. I know, think started. it's it's going to be one of those tools that you're working next to a tech that has it, and you try it and you fall in love with it. Yeah, I think so. Um, and, and it looks so simple. Like it looks like, oh, I'll just go grab a bat from wherever online or whatever, and rivet uh, whatever he's doing to put that th thing in there. And I'm, you know, it is what it is. It's. But uh, I'm telling you right here, this is. It's heavier than my dent. You've used my dent technology stuff yeah. that I've been using. It's heavier than that, but it's definitely not as heavy as your, your. Uh, what do I call that? The rail killer. What does someone call that? Uh, I forgot what he said. <laughs> but this thing is awesome. So that's all I got. It's two tools in one. Like I said, this blending hammer is by far the best blending tip on the market. I mean, it is uh, edgy wide, tool. edgy tools, Dave Stream with the O-ring. And then he's got the second O-ring in here. It, the vibration. It, this thing is awesome, man. It, it's like I said. Yeah, I asked him. I asked uh you know, Chad, because he's, you know, he is a PDR guy himself. And I said, you know, honestly, I don't really like the Kiko kind of, uh, what is that? The slapper tip oh, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I don't really like it. It, 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 
it gets uh damaged too quickly it mars up it's 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 soft metal i don't like it so yeah. i asked him if he tried it with any other any other tips and he said matter of fact it, it's uh it, it works even better with different tips <laughs> so it's just okay, different. all right <laughs> it, it's i cannot stand that uh kiko tip it, it sound it looked good but i think with the rubber on it it's gonna be it's gonna be nice yeah so i'm gonna order the pack oh yeah that that little rubber pad that slides on there right right yeah. okay yeah, so I just don't like it. It just gets into the dirt, and then the dirt ends up marking up the paint, and then it's just got a cluster right there. So, so what do you got hidden behind there, in I'm... your, in your standing table? I know. Yeah, <clears throat> Chris is actually walking on a treadmill as we're doing this. <laughs> He's yeah. trying to stay. <laughs> I am going to just link up Endeavor Tools because oddly enough. I was working on it. I was working with one of his tools today, which made me call him, which made me bring him one of his tools on the show. And I just dropped the link, guys, if you're interested. Look and at Chad getting all the love today. I know. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, so this is his uh, knockdown hammer with the knockdown that goes, stores it in between. I like this because I have the, what stand is that? The, um, God, what do they call that stand? I mean that uh yeah, that cart that I have. What is that cart? The cart. Come on. What is the name of that cart? Come on. The cart I can't even afford. <laughs> I forgot the name of the cart. What is it? I'm a little under the weather, so my brain is not working. What I'm, is the name of that cart, man? I forgot too. Oh man. Anyway. I can't afford it, so it doesn't matter. So the so the so the holes. Yeah, this is not gonna work. This is gonna work. So the hole is like this big to put tools in. There you go. Hit the bottom. Anyway, so it pretty much sits inside. Is that your drink? Yeah, it's okay. It's oh my drink. gosh, Chris! Come so it pretty on. much sits inside. TDN James Brown is on it. TDN cart James Brown. You win Thank the you, prize. James, there you go. There you go. So anyway, the holes are I believe about two and a half inches. Anyway, I just drop this in there, and it doesn't go all the way to the bottom. Instead of just uh, cluttering the top of my cart. I don't know why I forgot that TDN car. It's a great car. Just me heavy too. As can all be. And we've talked hours in the car on, on that I know. car. So the one thing that this tool that I like about this, and I told Chad about it, that it's a rubber uh, kind of yeah. top. Yeah. And normally I do not like hitting, uh, you know, a rubber uh, tip. <clears throat> uh, I like the um, either, you know, wood against the, mm -hmm. the, the um, plastic or whatever, the metal. Um, it just gives a different bounce. But when you flip this over, mm, this thing is money. This thing, I've I've had it held down, you know, like the edges of the fenders. I've it, this thing right here, knock down crowns, and they're like O rings or something for your fingers too, right? Oh, these right here. Yeah, just kind of some grip, the rubbery. Oh yeah, so yeah, it's you can hold it, yeah, definitely. But I have a reversible tip, and I put it on the end of this. I don't have it with me right now. And you could just use this as, you know, a blending hammer. What's with a reversible this, tip? Right. With this, uh, with this, um, kind of like rubber. Yeah. It's, it's weird. Cause it, they have a one inch <clears throat> rubber ball, but it reacts different than this one. So I don't is, know. It, does that unscrew out of there or is no, it? Or no. Is it... Let me see. Oh, it does. Okay. <laughs> I've never even tried it. So if anybody's interested in what it looks like, probably like a, a little oh, stopper a mini, going, okay. underneath a, going underneath a, like a stool or something, leg of a stool or something. I don't know. But anyway, I thought it was pretty nice. It's a dual purpose type, you know, tool. And I'm just finding new things about this tool. So uh, yeah, there you go. Back in the drink it goes. Using that for the with that metal tip or did you just put that on oh, for yeah. example? Yeah, this metal tip is beast. You're beating cars with a metal tip? Yes, of course. What do you think? I'm being a, is? I'm being a joke, sir. <laughs> I get that all the time. Yeah, I know. From the body guys, they're like, you're using metal? Yeah, that's the tip, guys. I don't know where I got this tip at. I just tend to... It looks like a dent gear. Okay. It looks if like you, a dent gear tip. If you go to MTE, just buy a whole bunch of tips. Walk out there with like <laughs> 10, 15 tips. There's stuff you won't be able to order. That That's when you go to MTE. They just got some off-the-wall off yep. stuff. Uh, that they used to sell and you'd be surprised you know i lose a lot of them you'd be surprised when i use them but this tip has been my uh my new favorite tip for finishing 
Uh, it just gets in it. Is it is it kind of rounded at the end or? Uh, it's a little rounded. It's not a point at all. Uh, but you know, just like a uh, Sal Catrice said, the 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 round is kind of you know the the high mark in the round. So he said you want to knock down with just round tips more so than you know a point. Yeah. <clears throat> so definitely, if y'all haven't, uh, if y'all don't know Sal, he's the creator of Dent Dow. I have a bunch of them. I think I had him on a, uh, the tools on the last show or something. He has a bunch of YouTube videos that explain a bunch of stuff. Uh, go ahead and message him if uh, if you guys are interested. But he'll he'll show you some stuff of how to make his tools work and his thought process of repairs is uh it's unique, but it works. And his stuff is. I got one at MTE. I think uh, Dave and I bought the uh, twenty two heavy. Yeah. And just sold out in an hour. Beast. <laughs> I do a ton of fenders, and those things are a beast for fenders. So, you know. Yeah. Did you see the last fender he did when he had two dent dials, one supporting the yeah. uh, edge and then another one pushing? Oh, man. So I don't crazy. know how long that took him. to. Set. I bet you it took him an hour to set that up. And that's the only thing, guys. You, <laughs> your mindset has to be different when you work with his tools. You got to think about a 15-minute setup time. And then the dent's going to come out in 15 minutes, pretty much no matter what kind of repair it is to a certain degree, I guess. He does a lot of push-pull. Push-pull, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, as he says, I'm trying to stay focused, Chris. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> now, it's Christopher Ray. So, that is a tough, <laughs> really that is a tough into the weather right now. Oh, man. Anyway, so my next tool is... The care point, I almost forgot that. <laughs> I would have remembered that one. <clears throat> care point uh, 510. And if you guys don't know about this tool, it's this, a Devo, this Devo special. You have, you have to have this tool, man. I don't it's, have it. Oh, man. I'm buying them this year. Okay, okay. Yes, I'm a year this, behind you guys. I'll let you guys waste your money and tell me what's good, then I buy it. I, I mean, you don't use it every day, obviously. Yeah, it's right? it, it's but, great for tops of doors and around handles. But when you need it, Man, you, you you're gonna be happy the, you bought it. The other week you were comparing it to the Dencraft black handled hooks. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I uh I don't know. I, I'm liking these better than the black handle uh hook tool. The only issue is is this some this um kind of mechanism right here, even though it's it's nice to be a ratcheting hammer. I mean you can't have your cake and eat it too, but it's kind of bulky. When you're kind of trying to, you know, you're trying to extend the tool its max length, and I tend to, I tend not to like to buy a six inch longer version. I tend to get if this if this tool was out, probably another, you know, I don't know, ten inches. But uh, but anyway, it's this mechanism is kind of big for a lot of the 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 stuff that you'll be doing with this tool. So they'll be in and out of doors in between uh, the the windows and the doors or whatever it is, and you're always trying to jam this tool somewhere. So I don't know. The mechanism kind of throws me off a little bit. Sometimes. What do you, what do you, what kind of dent do you use that for? So <clears throat> basically, uh, the dent pretty much right, right underneath the door handles. Uh, I basically come around from the, from the little access hole for the door handle to, to take apart the door handle. And you just, it, you just snake around and done. Easy, easy as pie right there. <laughs> How's the strength of it? I think it's stronger. It's a little thicker than um than okay. the uh, I guess it's a little it's a little thicker than the uh, small uh, dentcraft um, little hook set, the little smaller one. But uh, it's pretty stout. I don't have a problem with them. Um, some tools I do have a lot of problem with flex. You know, with mm -hmm. dentcraft, some of their rods flex a little bit too much for me. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I have them, and they do work on certain dents, but I don't recommend, uh, being your only rods. You will, uh, you will be fatigued working on something that needs <laughs> a whole lot of, uh, effort. So, um, I like, I like ultra, uh, dent gear. Uh, <clears throat> what rods do you use, Ryan? I have an, a couple old a ones that I just, okay. I can't get rid of. They're great. Um, a lot of dent, like dent craft. You yeah, know, mainly like the the round handed, the green and the turquoise. Yeah. Uh, to be honest with you, my new new rods, that three foot rod from 
I hate to say it, and I feel like we're getting paid <laughs> by, by Chad, but that is just such a great tool. You know, and 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 it's my go-to. I used it in a quarter today, and I used it in a fender today. And it's a square mm -hmm. rod. Like, it's a rod. You know what I mean? You're not usually sticking those rods like that in a fender opening in between the liner. But this thing sits on the tire. It doesn't slide off. It, it's a great tool. So, but It's like the dip now, but just... I don't know. I mean, you have a grip on that tool. Yeah. You know, so. I and he know. says he says he doesn't sell many of the three foot. Those, that three foot tool is a beast. Well, I guess for for <laughs> for a route guy, this would be great. So, and they're pretty inexpensive. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna check briefly, real quick. Uh, how much they cost here? Chad's gonna have to send us a check in the mail. <laughs> so that's only 160 bucks. So. <laughs> Pretty much with every everything else out here, I think Dentcraft probably has one for like ninety bucks. Yeah, so it's not that much more than a Dentcraft one. Um, I would like, I don't know, maybe the chat is an idea. Maybe you'd be able to add on like the twenty four and the thirty six. Mm -hmm. That way, you, you just and I'm sure if you these. if you contact them and you want something special, I'm sure you could make it. Yeah, you maybe. know whatever you need. Um. One problem I have with Dentcraft tools, and it, it seems to be worse than it was before, is the rusting of them. Yeah. Like a lot of my yeah, older right. Dentcraft stuff isn't as rust as my rusted as my new stuff. I went to a new truck, and it seems to be getting – I don't know if there's more moisture in there. I'm right. trying to figure it out. Um, but yeah. I don't know. I don't know I what don't it is. I remember that, pulling out some of my old rods, and I'm just like, I can't even touch them. Yeah. Got to work with gloves. Yeah, I mean – you get what you pay for. To me, it's the best bang for the buck. But if you're that guy that wants to snap on type set, yeah, you know, ultra, definitely the ultra, ultra. I, I believe you know zero ultra tools. Yeah, zero. So there you go, guys. Twenty <clears throat> what? Twenty two years? Twenty one? No, nineteen, right? Eighteen years. 19, zero 18, ultra tools. Zero ultra. So you and don't I, have to have snap on tools. And I totally, totally could have used some of those shave tools. So that's definitely in the purchase here soon. Cause yeah. I struggled on a Lexus roof this week that Chris was laughing at me this morning about because <laughs> it's like the worst roof you can ever try to fix. Yeah, Ultra Shade too. <clears throat> Ooh, best thing, best. Thing. Yeah, and I have both. I have Dencraft and Ultra, and I would definitely run to that Ultra. Actually, I run to both. Dencraft has the real small foot. Oh yeah, it's in the tight spots. It's flexible, more flexible. Nah. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm working in between two trucks, and today was the everything I needed that I never use, I didn't have. So, you know, it's one of them things when you need it, it's yeah. there. <clears throat> All right, guys. I don't know if I told you guys, but uh, Dave is finishing up a job. He may join us uh, in a little bit, but uh, most likely uh, he won't be joining us this this evening. So. Let's get started with how to approach a dent. So yes, we were. I was thinking that I basically show you some pictures. You tell me how you approach. If you didn't, I know if the customer sent this picture in. So if there's any R and I's uh, that need to be done, just step by step of what's your first approach and what's your backup plan. Okay. And really, we're gonna try to just. <clears throat> I've seen some of these pictures, uh, but we're gonna try to do it off the fly here, guys. So you can see how fast ryan thinks about repairs um really quick let me just set this up so he's have he hasn't seen this dent before any of these pictures chris put me on the spot here yeah i mean i can't put you on the spot because you sent it to me so i have to that's always been fun to have david here so all right let's see if i can screen share this real quick and get it moving it's a video I don't know if you guys are going to hear it. It doesn't really matter. Audi, top of the door. Woo. Yep. I talk a little bit about that dent, so. Are you seeing this or is it chopping? I am. No, it's good. It's good. Okay. So, <clears throat> what year is that, Chris? Good question. I repaired it. Don't even remember. I think it's a 2011 Audi. It's not I aluminum. Think, I think it's an Audi. I don't know what the 
It's definitely an Audi. Yeah. Um, A4, I think. That one, I think I'd be removing the door panel. Okay. Raising the glass because I believe the top of that door is all braced. Yep. Um, put some heat on it. Make a couple pushes in the um, center of the dent to knock the crown. Keep pushing, knock some more crown. Because if you go right at that crown, it's going to dent the top of that door. Yeah. Um, and then work your way down around that handle. Most of the severity is right there at that body line. Yeah. Right where your your mark is. So, um, but the biggest thing would be remove the door panel because I believe at that second body line, it's all boxed there. So you're not going to get the top even with a hook. Yeah. And I know it, Chris, Chris, <clears throat> you take up you take apart a lot more stuff than I do. So. Yeah. Um, you could even start that. Another approach for that would be glue. If you yeah, don't so want to take would, a lot of stuff, I would glue the center of the dent. Yeah. Right. Glue it. See if some of it moves. If it doesn't move, glue it again. Then knock some of that crown down um, and, and evaluate where you are. The stuff around the handle, I think some of that may walk after you get the rest of that body line because that body line's actually in just a little bit. Some of that may walk out when you get that line back up. So that's how I would do it. How did you approach it? <laughs> Man, I don't even remember the car. <laughs> That's how bad it is. Well, if you know, I, 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 um, exact same thing. There is no access in those Audis through the any type of uh, holes around the um, the door handle mechanism. Uh, so I would just basically go in there with a uh, with a window wedge and see where the braces are. Whether it just be peek inside, just to see where the brace is at, because sometimes. Oddly enough, they may not run the brace right uh, right at the uh, body line, but because the body line is kind of higher, it it has a, uh, a a higher chance of the the um, bracing coming all the way down to the uh, to that body line right a there. A lot of times, I would open the door, and you can kind of see where those spot welds are. I'm not sure yeah. on that vehicle. Yeah. That's so you're always a about tell. right here. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see my uh, my cursor here. Um, sometimes I can shake it and go, there you go bigger. Anyway. Um, so I, I know I, I removed the door panel and kind of came up, I believe with a whale tail to get that dent up. And then a lot of glue. Cause I did not want to put a tool on it if I, if I didn't have to. So, yeah. uh, I think I just got the bulk of it up with glue, knocked down the crown. And then just the tool was the kind of the finishing. Yeah. Uh, and I think I'd glue pulled the, uh, the glue around the door handle too. Okay. What you're not seeing is there's a little crease that goes from here to there. You can kind of see it in your reflection there. Yeah, and I was able to get that with a tool, I believe, up until about here. And then I had to glue pull the rest. So I'm, this this is starting to come back to me. <laughs> All right, next picture here. So I'm going to do one uh, that you just sent, and I don't know how <laughs> you worked it, so... Let's see here. Rick says, pops a dent. <laughs> yeah. They got a deal at Target right now. Oh, man. I like the pops a dent, guys. All right. Here we go. I got to share with what uh, my buddy just sent me. So Ryan already fixed this. <clears throat> and I only have this picture. I don't know what kind of car it is. So what kind of car is it, Ryan? It's a brand new Mazda 5. Okay. Um, it's that four coat. So it's not like a three stage. It's got it's they call it a a four coat paint job. Nobody wants to paint it because of the yeah, color. Painting a figure eight or something. Yeah. You're, you're painting the whole side of the car. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Okay, so I don't really see. Oops, I'm not presenting it to everyone. I don't really see the pit as much in this picture, but I would probably get some help. And pull this dead center that my mouse is on mm -hmm. while I am beating down. Hmm. Well, this would be tr this would be testing it. I would have to pull this out while I'm knocking down this crown, but I will literally be doing this gradually. I would not sit there with a blending hammer and a glue pull. It would be all in one motion. That would be my ideal. Now, if there's a is this sharp, deep dent right here, or is it just yeah. on the body line? No, it's sharp underneath the body underneath line, too, yeah. So, <clears throat> and is this round part all the crown right here? Yeah, it oh is. Oh, my God. 
terrible. Oh man. So yeah, that would be, I have to move some of the, uh, some of the deeper areas in, 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 try to get this crown down as clean as I possibly can. Obviously, R and I door would definitely be where it's at. Looks like it's off the car, on the stand. Uh, I would definitely use the dent dowel and probably something to leverage off of, uh, uh, kind of like a K bar. To mm -hmm. if I'm by myself, so <clears throat> that would be. I have to pull and and knock down at the same time, for sure. But the metal is going to tell me what to do because that metal and that and those uh, Mazdas are, are weird. It, you're dead on. So what we did was we R&I the door. We ended up having the D trim. Everything completely got the door. Reason why is Mazda went to that whole carrier. Oh, carrier plate. So we removed everything. <clears throat> the molding down low was damaged, so they were replacing it anyway. So we ended up gluing a tab in the center, having one of my guys hold pressure on it as I was starting to beat down some of that some of that crown. How did um, it, how did how did it work? slow <laughs> so I it felt like <clears throat> yeah what what tip did you use to knock it down you know what i was using was the big round blue ball from dencraft yeah that's a good tip that's um a good tip. i realized i was using the smaller i used a lot of the smaller dencraft blue balls but it was starting to leave a little bit of pitting and i didn't want to do that because of that swell of that door and the color i didn't want to model it um so we slowly beat it down brought it up so I mainly brought up the uh, the center there, right? Like right where your cursor is. Mm -hmm. I mainly brought up that where the body line was and then started to approach the lower crease okay. underneath of it. Um, right where your cursor is down a little bit, it looks like a smile in the right underneath the body line. That's right actually here. another up oh, a little bit. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> There's actually another crease underneath of that body line that was super sharp. So my biggest thing was try to move as much metal as we could originally. Um, and then I glued, and in the bottom of that door, um, there's a big hole. And I just got a ton of metal, ton of, you know, a big tip tool in there and just started working it and then slowly graduated to the to the really sharp tools. Um, the, the hardest part of that whole den is the crown. Yeah, that crown, if it goes from here to here, you're just, it's like double crowned it here yeah. and it buckles all the way around here. And getting that big Ooh. buckle back in that swell, you know, I hate when the, when the door has that swell, like perfect example, all the new Hondas on the fenders, they're not straight down. It's, it's got that, got that swell in there. So it, that always gives me a hard time, even with my experience. So uh, yeah. How long did it take um, you, Ryan? Almost five hours. So, mm. you know, it, but I mean, it's, it's an, it's, it's a pretty, and you're an extensive R and I, I mean, you're, yeah. you're taking everything off the door. The only thing that stayed in the door was the, uh, run channel for the glass. <laughs> <clears throat> so, and then it stays anyway. <laughs> so, uh, um, what does it say? Marty from top gun teaches. So I listened, I actually watched some of his videos he explains uh, the process very well. Um, you know, I'm not trying to say he's the best, but I, I, I don't know. I, I like the way he's teaching. Um, the way he his videos are, uh, I like it. So definitely, uh, I didn't know his name was Marty, but the Top Gun, um, I think it's called Top Gun Dent Repair or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and and Rick says uh, Ryan heat knowledge. a ton of heat. We yeah. put. I, I was worried that I was going to burn the paint because I was really worried about the paint cracking in the center of that. But yes, yes, a ton of heat on there. Um, obviously, we put a little bit of heat, then glue pulled, and then heat kind of back and forth. Mm. Um, it's like I, I got the blue balls going on. So we're, <laughs> we're doing good. So I have one for you, Ryan. Now, I fixed this one. This is on my Instagram somewhere. But uh, I'll share it with you. See where how you would start it here. Let me see here. <clears throat> there we go. It's a video here. Oh, yeah. Nasty sharp. Uh, what kind of car is that? So this is a Chevy SS. So basically a, a Subaru. <laughs> 
the way that metal was moving. So can I tell you a little secret about those cars? So that's the the SS model, like the the big motor, like, uh, yeah. Australian made. Right, right, yeah. So the only reason I know this tip to that vehicle is it's the same vehicle as the state police in Maryland use. The, they're the, the Caprice. It's the same okay. base platform. The okay. easiest way and the best leverage to get to that den, and I'm not saying you did it. I'm going off topic. Yeah. Pull the bumper, and there's a mm-hmm. plastic retainer that runs that whole length. If you pop that plastic retainer off, there's a square rectangle holes throughout that whole edge mm-hmm. of that quarter. You can get all over that den. But – just to go back on topic of where we are, heat right off the bat. Yes, of course. Okay. Pull the tail light if you can. I don't think you did, did you? You went through the quarter trim because you did because I think yeah. that car you have to pull the bumper to take you the tail light. You have out. to pull the bumper. That is exact. Ryan's memory is on point. Um so mainly heat. And it's super sharp in that center, correct? Super sharp, yep, of course. Obviously, you scuffed the paint, and you have to deal with that. It was actually spidering, and I had to super glue this little trick. I don't know, maybe I'm going to take the tricks. But I had to super glue the spider paint uh, so, so it wouldn't flex anymore. I would go sh- take it off. <laughs> sharp, sharp tool in that center and try to get it to shrink up in the center a little bit. I would make some pushes in the center of the super sharp, start getting that up, and then get down where that bumper edge is, make a couple pushes in there, and then come back to the super sharp. Yeah. I th- great idea. That's exactly what I did. I used a dent dial on this one, uh, mainly because I was kind of by myself. The customer was standing kind of off to the side. I think you can see him in one of the pictures. He's like off to the side here in the reflection. All of those guys that own those cars are kind of eccentric. <sighs> yeah, they. <clears throat> it, but hey, he was right there with me. And what hit it? I, I don't know. I think something in his garage. Mm. Um, but oh no, he said he don't know. He came out of the parking lot, and that's what he got. He was actually very upset, like he would uh, punch the guy <laughs> if he would have saw it done. So I didn't want to continue on that conversation. So I just reassured him that it was uh, fixable, and it took me about three hours. And I think what you just said was I should have probably pulled the bumper, but because he was sitting right there, it's kind of one of those things that if you you know, I'm by myself. I don't want the customer to help me. And I just pulling that big giant oh, bumper yeah. by myself. I'm just asking for the bumper to kind of fall down on one side and stuff like that. Even though I would lay down some some type of cloth or anything. It's just I don't know. He he does not want panels hanging off of his exactly. Car. And the other so. thing is the minute you touch it, you own oh, it. That's it. That's it. The, the scratch that was there for two years is now your scratch. Yes. So. Yes. So they I always say customers look at the car after you repair it, not before. <laughs> yes. So, so, but anyway, but that's one of the reasons why I did not did not take the uh, the bumper off. Probably should have just you know bite the bullet. But um, but yeah. So I just used the dent dial, got some crazy access. Had to take one of the computers uh, yep. out of the car. Uh, yeah, because both of those quarters are loaded with yeah all kind of stuff. Right. So I had to dis- <clears throat> disconnect all that stuff and then. Uh, and you were able to get the dental in there. What what did you use just a dental or did you use a tip? No, actually, yeah, it was a little stub tip. If you go to my Instagram, you guys can see it. It was a little stub tip that I have. Again, I don't know where I bought it from, but I was at MTE and I buy 15, 16 tips when I'm down there. But so when you guys come to MTE, just follow Chris around and just buy <laughs> all the weird stuff he buys. You're gonna be in good you have shape. To, man. You have to. Because you get a lot of like uh manufacturers from different countries there yeah and you just don't see this stuff you, you don't go on their website or anything you're not trying to ship a tip from there from you know uh, a lot of german companies it's just like those uh, dent, so. those dollies that i buy from that german company yeah exactly those dollies are i keep buying them because i can't get them anywhere else right you know? so. so but yeah and, so that's 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 it you gotta buy all check it out. i'm a hands-on guy so yeah yeah, Ryan goes down there and he's like running back to his hotel room like every three hours, just dumping it on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> so let me see. What's the next one? I want to get everybody involved. I wish we can just do this call center and ask what everybody else thinks. All right, this one is interesting. 
Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can put this one up here. I don't even know how to repair this, I'll be honest. Oh. Uh, so, Ryan repaired this, so let me go at it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll probably kick the other side so it matches. <laughs> yeah. That's probably it. So, no, um, let me let me go at it. So, I definitely heat. <sighs> you see that little homemade? That was before. <laughs> this is how old this photo is. This is before James Lee came out with the claw. Oh, wow. I didn't know that photo was this old. That was some homemade before James Lee tricks. Knowing a Chevy truck. Ford, 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 Ford Ranger. Okay. okay. Sorry. I would try to see if I can. See, I don't do much bedside. So my, my approach would be just try to glue as much as I can. And I would take my Craftsman hammer just to get majority of that up. I don't care how ugly it looks as long as I'm not cracking paint. Um, and then once I get it somewhat flat, um, that's when I'll start finesse and I'll probably build a jig somewhere around here so that I can get a tool, definitely take the tire off. And that would be my process. So what I actually did was obviously I had heat on it. Right. One of the biggest concerns is at the very bottom of that dent, you can see where that line is. Um, that was where it rolled underneath of the bedside. So that was kind of all smashed out where that 10 millimeter bolt is right by the wheel where the brace is. That's supposed to be underneath of that bedside. So my first of approach was unbolt it, remove that brace. We ended up replacing that base brace okay. because it was bent beyond. Okay. Um, so that, that kind of freed it up a little bit. Um, I'll be honest with you. We ended up taking another piece of steel, bolting it, to the bedside and bolting it back in the, where the brace originally bolted ah. and cold glued it for a ah, bunch okay. up with cold glue. Okay. The very, the craziest thing is the very bottom part of that, where it's all wrinkled, where it's supposed to be underneath where like the stone guard is. Mm -hmm. I use, and I still have them in my truck. They're a body men's pair of, uh, like frame clamps. They've got a really, it's like a pair of ice grips and it's got a really flat, Okay. Head on it. And there it's got rubber on both sides. So I, I wrapped it with a towel and just started bending that lower lip mm. to get that strength back. And that walked a lot of that dent out. Okay. There's actually more to that dent if it goes up beyond that hump. But a lot of that walked after I got the bottom. The biggest problem with that dent was the lower section. So where that stone guard is, that should have been underneath. Yeah. Oh wow! So, okay. so yeah, so you have to bring this up, and then that's supposed to yep. kind of roll over like this. Oh, so wow. it wasn't perfect. I, I'll you know I'll, I'll tell anybody that it, it wasn't perfect, but they wrote it for a seventeen hundred dollar bedside. It took me about five hours. Wow! And he was unbelievably happy. So wow. I did that about five years ago. So mm -hmm. would you do another one? No. <laughs> <laughs> um porta power was definitely we i forgot that part of the whole process after when we did that homemade brace we did end up using a little bit of a porta power from the backside. uh patrick actually brought that up i said that when i when i sent him the picture that's what i originally used was part of a porta power <laughs> porta power with a baseball glove wow so you use an old baseball glove on the end of a porta power and it gives you that padding and it'll move a lot of metal well, you're in that so, baseball town, Baltimore. So that's yeah, it. Stadium's right there. All right, last one, and then we're going to open up for some Q&A, get you guys to ask questions. So uh, I guess we do two more here. <clears throat> I got a video of one. Let's see. I need like a switch panel. Oh, there we go. CRV Brian's picture, so I'll go at it. Um, honestly, I'll probably take apart the interior to see what the um I guess quarter panel. So I'll probably take apart the the back interior panels to see if there's anything that will give me access onto that because I know I'll possibly have to use a tool uh, to just finesse the center. I don't know if there's a line in it or I could be wrong here. Uh, I might not get anywhere, but I'll see how long it takes to get this tail light out and maybe lower part of the bumper.
but I would definitely start this dent though with uh with glue, hundred percent with glue. Um, I get majority of that lineup with glue. Probably spend a, at least 15, 20 minutes getting that, getting that lineup while I'm knocking down the crown. I think you can glue pull the center first, just a little bit. You're not trying to pull the the whole entire dent up. But once it starts to move, you definitely have to address this crown right here. And I think you can get this dent about 90% with all glue. But I really think you're going to have to finesse a little bit. Maybe, let me see if I can zoom in. Can I zoom in here? I think right here, there may be a line in it. There may be a reflection. But a lot of times when it's hit like this, there's a little line. But what was it, Ryan? So if you look at the door to the quarter, the quarter is a repaint. Ah, didn't even so spot I, that. So I, so I could not glue pull. Um, Rick actually brought it up. I cold glued the center of it. I'm a huge fan of cold glue. I cold glued the center of it, brought up probably 50% of it. Um, pulled the taillight. <clears throat> Couldn't get enough leverage through the taillight opening. So I ended up... <clears throat> excuse me. I ended up removing the flare and pulling the rear bumper. Okay. And that's another one with the retainer there at the bumper edge. You pull the retainer and there's some holes in there and got in there with a little rubber tip and, and got the rest of it out. So, um, yeah, I think, I think a, a good majority of cars have that little retaining clip mechanism. Yeah. It really bumper. depends on how it's mounted. Sometimes they're mounted straight into the quarter and the other ones are, some of them are mounted at the edge. Right. Um, I do a, a ton of Hondas, so um, <laughs> create a remanufactured hole. <laughs> you know, and a lot of guys, I, I try not to to drill. You know, it's it, it's a last resort. You know, this probably could have been fixed in about ten minutes if I could have drilled a hole in the jam. You know, probably yeah, right I think it jam. took me about an took me probably about an hour and maybe an hour and a half with pulling the bumper. So. But yeah, you could see the color difference in between the quarter and the door. But yeah. he he was praising that it was never painted. So I just okay, <laughs> you know. But it wasn't a terrible dent with heat and then cold glue pulled the bumper, told it up, and, and we were good good to go. Let me so. let me ask you, Ryan. Do you get your customers to sign a waiver, the little glue pulling waiver? I do, I do. Okay. Um, only mainly retail. I kind of feel the customer out. Um, okay. Same a lot of way. times I have them just sign it and I explain, hey, even when I ex explain the damage, if I'm going to glue pull something, I always say, hey, there is a chance the paint could come off. You're obviously with me for a reason. You're either going to have me fix it or have the body shop fix it. So this waiver just protects me explaining, hey, I'm not liable. I'm not doing it on purpose, but it does happen. Right. And I actually got that waiver from um, Dent Trainer. Yeah. So if you guys have Dent Trainer, all those are in the in the workshop part of it. And uh any redesign off. the website, it is hard as hell to find right now, I'll tell you that. Really? Keep looking. It used to be kind of at the top, just kind of PDFs or something they used to call it. But uh look at like the business section, I think, or business center or something. They renamed it. I think they just, just renamed it or something. But uh yeah, I got mine through Dent Dow. And and if uh if you're part of mobile tech rx they have a glue pulling waiver also inside of their section which is pretty cool let me show you guys this do they really real quick i <clears throat> i stumbled on this just i was just bored one day and i was going through mobile tech rx and so when you go off to the side let's see if i can find it here oh, let me i thought i was <laughs> you guys can see this hold on ooh, ooh, there we go let me see if I can find this thing. So there we go. So we go off to the side. It says uh, settings. And then you go, I believe, to resources. And then there's all your matrix. I uh, hope you guys can see that. Come on. So there's your matrix. So you don't have to keep emailing them now. It gives you all the U.S. matrix. You can print them out, mail them to whoever you need to mail them to, email them to. Um, and let's see if we can find the waiver here. There's no back button. Okay. Come on. Ah. Oh, here we go. Uh, so there you go. So you go in the settings, legal documents, and then you got the glue pulling waiver, the non-compete, 
the subcontractors agreement, which is pretty slick. My, my CPA wow. got me on the subcontractors agreement is very good. Uh, he had one done for me, so I didn't use this one, but, uh, that was pretty good fine, uh, cool. Wow. Fine. And I don't that know was... why nobody puts this out, but that is stellar right there. How about that? <laughs> authorization. Do you have customers sign an authorization? Uh, <clears throat> I, on certain customers, certain customers, <clears throat> you know, you got to fill them out, man. If they start becoming, uh, you know, those types of customers, you just want to make sure all your. If the vehicle's left at the shop, I have them fill out an authorization. So if they leave the keys and then come back and pick it up. Reason why is years and years ago, I worked in the shop and it, it was snowing out and a roof collapsed. And it, ended up, it wasn't my car that I was working on and it totaled the car. Oh, wow. It was a big lawsuit, but you always just want to cover your butt. So, you know, you look well, a little more professional. I should have had one guy sign. It was before Mobile Tech RX. I had the only bounce check I've ever had in my in my, my uh, business. I don't accept checks anymore unless it's through business to business transactions. But um, but he said I was not authorized to work on the vehicle, and I just shook my head. I was young. I said, "Well, how in the world did I get your keys?" And I was going to take him to court, but it was a four hundred dollar bill, and it would have cost me probably more than four hundred dollars yeah. to go to court. So he won. Uh, on that, but it, I learned my lesson. Another question for you. If you have a customer paying with a credit card, do you have them sign the invoice when the vehicle is completed? Uh, no, because my credit card platform is different. It's, it's not, uh, it's into it. So they pay through Apple pay N normally Apple pay, or they put in their credit card themselves. I don't put their credit card in. So I send them an email. They pull the email up. Does two things for me. It, it uh, activates the um, kind of like the newsletter because they open up the came from me. So, uh, but uh, they have to fill out the form on their phone. So I don't even touch the credit card. And so that's how okay. that works. But if if you guys do use a credit card machine, I use like one of the chip readers. Always have them sign the invoice. Reason why is it shows that they were there. They did the yeah. repair, credit card receipt, invoice, both of them match. They can't fight it. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So most of you find it, sign it with your finger anyway, so it looks all. Yeah, great. but as long as they're uniform, you know what I mean. I use the Apple yeah. pencil a lot. I have them sign with an Apple pencil, okay. which is a little little easier. Um, but always cover your butt. I had a guy a couple, I guess, two years ago, refuse a payment. All right, so I'm ready for the last one. You haven't seen this one right here. So there you go, here. here. Present to everyone. That's a terrible dent. Let me know what you got right there. I think it needs a gate. <laughs> <laughs> I got to throw you off there. I got to throw you off. Just one. So you wouldn't attempt it, that one, huh? It needs a gate. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely does. Oh, man. I can't believe you didn't blow the glass to... out of it. No. I was getting ready to uh, attempt that, at least make it look a little bit better, to save the gate so they can just, I guess, slightly mud it. But, uh, cold glue? Yeah. It was too far gone for me. If you had some cold <laughs> glue, we could get that up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they ordered a gate for that. Whew. I wanted to try it, though. I'll tell you. Where's Bryce at? Come on, Bryce, get on here. Yeah, he right. he glassed that in about three hours. I don't know about three. <laughs> That's <laughs> All right, guys, we're gonna open up the Q the Q and A section of this uh, live show. So, if you guys have any questions, do we have any questions? I wasn't really looking at the chat too much. As I was um, mainly it was about my blue balls. Um, <laughs> uh, cover the glue. So someone, I think, if I remember correctly, asked me if I had the... Why is this thing acting all crazy? Hold on, I got to get this. Deep. So there's another thing on here. You know, you, you, I think we were talking about it the other week. You guys are on here pretty regularly. If there's something you guys want to hear or, or, you know, something you guys want to get info from us, send, them, send us a message. You know, this it's pretty much what we're doing this for you guys. So if there's something we're not covering or, or something you want to hear from us, just send one of us a message and we'll we'll you know definitely address it. 
you know, even if it's a topic, hey, we got this topic, be great. Let us know, you know, any input. Great. It's an open Carter book a, here. Carter had a good question. Uh, bef before we uh, go into that question, guys, um, my email is at the bottom. So if you need to communicate with me, my email is at the bottom. Uh, also, subscribe to our newsletter. Also, the link is in our in our uh, in our description. Uh, it just gives you updates on the news that I do for PDR. I try to find uh, kind of news for our industry. It could be type of metals of, of cars that are coming out and all you know, just random things that help our industry. Again, it's in the description. It says <clears throat> subscribe to our newsletter. Just go ahead and click it and put your email in. Um, so Carter had a question. What do you guys use to protect the vehicle when you're leveraging a rod? So I guess your leveraging point. What do you use, Ryan? What does he mean by le like on an inner brace or? So I guess, yeah. So I guess if you're leveraging, I mean, for my dent dial, I have, you know, leveraging points that I can leverage. You know, I mean, uh, it, I use an edgy hanger, you know, if I'm in a, uh, in a, what is it called in a taillight opening i'll hang an edgy hanger in there right use that as leverage um you know if, a lot of times if you're really cranking on a quarter and on an inner brace you'll damage that inner brace i don't know if yeah. that's what he means you know what i use a lot of times the quarter foam out of a crv in a, <laughs> in in the i think like 07 to 2012 they have this bag and it's got foam inside of it I took it out of a totaled car and it's still in my truck. I use it all the time. Just kind of put it up against a brace and it'll help, you know, help not damage that. I use a lot of um, two by fours. Yeah. Two you know, fours. the mini, I cut the two by fours down the, to, to about this length and just keep them in the truck. You never know when you need them. Um, I've got to run the screws so I can like screw them together real quick. If I, oh, need okay. So I just have like a <clears> bunch <throat> of random screws I can do. I have a, uh, like a 12 by 12 kind of, I don't know, I got it off of eBay. It's like a thick cowhide. Okay. And that's what I put in, you know, I pretty much just throw it in there and I leverage wherever, wherever I want to. But that's what I use um, to leverage off. Just a, just a cowhide. I don't even know if it's cowhide, but it's real thick uh, leather. Um, so straight lines is awesome. I use green and I use uh, the blue. What's the name of the blue? Oh, I got some here. Hang on one sec. Let me see. <clears throat> yeah, I just use green in cold. If it's too cold, oh, it's, it's just go. Oh, but all green for me when it starts. The weather starts. Can't even get back over here. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> I'm coming. Swiss blue. Swiss blue. Okay. So that stuff works in extreme cold. Who? Who sells this? Anson. Plain Jane Swiss Blue. I, I buy a lot of glue from uh, James Lee. Okay, so, so James Lee sells this. It? Yeah. Okay. But it's Plain Jane Swiss Blue. Extreme cold. But for the most part, I stick with the green. It's pretty much my versatile. This, this whole year, it's been green, dead out red, and um, uh, the hog glue I've been dabbling with. So definitely do we have any other questions buy here? some hole plugs yeah i didn't understand that one hole plugs in them hmm. i didn't understand that oh someone says k bar or centipede uh straight lines uh i don't have either so um when i i use the k bar i the um, dent dial version, there's no point of getting the K bar if you have a dent dial and all the glue pulling set up. So, and I have a slot bar from James, I mean, from uh, Sal also. So, I kind of went to works. Kiko. I mean, the, the, the K bar is a nice tool. You know, it, it's not a tool you're going to use every day. I, I think the dent dial is a little more versatile. Yeah, I think you get a little bit more money out of the dent dial. But so, there's some cases where I was like, man, I wish I had the K-Bar. You know, it's just a little longer. It's just made for those types of pull where I'm trying to makeshift the uh, the dent dial. But the thing about the dent dial is like just go Set to up. like Home Depot and just buy everything that screws into it and just start making some stuff because that's when your tool is going to become 
more versatile is when you do that. Uh, just start expanding. I think I watched every time I watch one of Sal video, I'm like, he doesn't even sell that. Yeah. <laughs> like I gotta go make that. He just, he just <laughs> creating stuff as he goes, whatever right. works, you know, Whatever works. So he, <clears throat> he knows what he needs to do. And then that's it. You know, I, I, I think the Kiko stuff is definitely coming, you know, they're bringing a lot of new stuff out. Yeah. You know, we tried the, the orange, black and orange blue, blue from uh, I Daniel. I have. How does it pull? Uh, I don't like the black. Okay. Um, the orange, it's very comparable to the fire. Okay, so it's a hot type. Hot warm temp, weather. Warm yeah. weather glue. But, I, I mean, if you leave it on there, I, I've been dabbling with times because, I, like I said before, I'm running two glue guns. If okay. you leave it on the panel, a lot of times with green, if you leave it on panel and you pull it, it'll come right off. The, the orange, you have to leave on there for a long time to really make a hard pull. And that may be his thought process. With the, He's mainly using it for gas tanks. Right. So <clears throat> it's definitely something to, to use. It isn't, you know. To keep in mind, guys, you know, I, we're in the Washington, D.C. area. I mean, Ryan is only about 40 miles north of me. And so Daniel, when he, I guess, created his glue or at least was practicing it himself is in California. Yep. I don't know where he's at in California, but the humidity is completely different in California. Yes. So it's gotta, all temperature regulated. Right. So if you're at the MTE show there, Kiko has a class. I forget the name of it. Um, who teaches it, uh, Ryan? Jonathan. Jonathan. So if you're at go to MTE, you gotta take anything that Jonathan talks about and he breaks down it perfect. Yeah, like that's all you need right there. So don't it's get stuck on it. the colors. Nope. But if you're you know, we're talking about it from the Washington DC area. So if you have the same type of weather, then uh I recommend the glue and the uh, the green and the and the red, the den out red. Yeah. Uh, but but I'll yeah. tell you, and I I said this before. I I've got two things of tab weld here. I can't use it. I can't use tab weld here. Um, the hall glue, the black I, I don't really care for. But the orange, if you leave it on there, it's pulling. It is pulling. Yeah. But the green is my go. Yeah. You know. I don't know. I know it's consistent to me. I just yes. Anymore. Straight lines had a questions. Do you ever get call customer calls? Uh, and when you tell them that you're mobile and they kind of chuckle, implying that you aren't a legit business, I guess. I don't have that problem. I'm not mobile. So, you know, a lot of it, it's more of a convenience for them. So, yeah. and it, I, my thing is all my stuff's logoed. So you're getting out with a uniform, your vehicle's logoed. So when you pull up yeah. to their house, they know you're not just some guy at Home Depot trying to pull dents out and rub wax on it. Yeah. So. Definitely. Uh, I get the uh, total opposite. I get uh, customers that are going like, wow, you're not mobile? Mm -hmm. And it's kind of weird, but I may lose one or two a month from the mobile, but uh, I don't know. Uh, mobile sometimes with the weather, it's tough. I mean, this last three weeks, it's been raining. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. so, and you get the customers that don't quite understand why you're not coming to their house in the pouring down rain. Yep. So and they'll say I have a carport. Yeah. It's just like, man. Uh, so Jaws saying what remove the customer's plugs if you have a replacement plug. A lot of times if I pull the rubber plugs out, I'll put that same rubber plug back in the hole. Yeah. And I don't try to make the hole any bigger either. No. So I, I know that's it with that legal, yeah. you know, it's Technically, if there's already a manufactured hole, you can make that hole bigger. But I'm still not a big drill making a hole. Yeah. Like I said, it's all in your instance. You know, what about really tab depends. well, Ryan? For me, it, it I, I can't, I don't use it. Yeah, so, Rick, next time you see, you can have these two things of tab <laughs> weld. They're yours because they're just <laughs> hanging out over here. Um, yeah, yeah it, for me, it stays too gummy. I like that get hard and, and let me snap it. It just seems a little rubbery for me. Oh, let's yeah. see what else. He said, I pulled uh, a hell car in the shop with 
with the low humidity because of the AC, and it could pull the whole car. You're right. You should see Rick. Rick's <laughs> his new shop's pretty nice. His new little, little oh, home bro? shop. Yeah, it, it's got a nice little setup oh, over okay. there. I gotta check it out. So I still not using the tab weld, but I'll check out the place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, straight lines. Um, anything that you can do to make you look like a legitimate business is great. I think that's what you're yeah. uh, applying. I think transparency that. helps. Yeah, you know, I I'll tell you a perfect instance of that. We're running over a little bit. I had a customer uh, with a Range Rover. Uh, you could tell he had quite a bit of money. Came over, took a look at his vehicle, gave him an estimate, and he looks at me. I pull up in a vehicle that's logoed. Me and my helper were dressed in the RPS uniform. And he said, look, you know, I had another guy come. Look at this vehicle. He's $250 cheaper than you. <laughs> I like that. But I'm going with you because he pulled up in a Prius, pulled all the, you know, was in a shirt that looked like he, he actually said he looks like he had the shirt made at the, at the mall. <laughs> he's like, and I feel more comfortable with somebody that looks professional. He's like, you have an iPad. He had some notepad paper, you know, so all that stuff comes in a fact when you're, when you're dealing with some high end cars or any customer, the transparency. So, so what I, what I do, I think Colin, uh, understood the question a little bit better. Actually, I guess he was explaining how to cut down some damage on that hole. Um, Replacing the plug when it's done. So what I do is I take the Tesla tape mm -hmm. and I just load it up on that hole. Mm -hmm. uh, or I just stay away from it. I use my other hand to just kind of make sure I'm just away from that area. Of course, I'm going to have a little bit of contact. And if I do take a little bit of the paint off, I just touch it up with uh, just black. I don't really try to match the car. But, you know, uh, the whole point is I'm not trying to touch that area. It does happen. Metal, metal against metal. You know what else works is glue. Yeah, I've tried that one time and it didn't work. <laughs> just you know, glue just, the hole up. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Not even cool. gluing the hole up. Putting glue on that edge. Uh huh. So you're not right on the metal. What what now I use super glue so that it was already spider on that one day. I use super glue to hold that that um, paint in until I finished pushing and I took it off. How'd you get it off? Uh well I had to well I, I had to wet sand it because yeah. <laughs> that thing ain't coming off. So, yeah. but the den alone, it, when I was done with that den, I have to wet sand it anyway. So I wasn't, I laid it super thin and also act as a guide. So I knew exactly how far I can take the wet sand. And so, um, I used a block on that one, but, uh, I wonder if you could just kind of like the edge of a door that you need to kind of hammer out. What if you mm -hmm. just glue that edge Yeah, and kind of just hammer it out and kind of, I think it would help. You know, from any damage that happens to, yeah. the, to the paint on that one. So spray some alcohol on there, peel it off. <clears throat> Be done. I'm gonna try one on a spare door that I gotta see how hard I can hit without damaging. So good idea. So, those are those lot. That's the point of a rock lot. You know, I'm pretty <laughs> sure we all have those lots, and you could just test the limit. I actually don't. Some, I don't have uh, any rock I, lots. I, yeah, I don't have them. But these, I wish I did, because I would pull one in to, tomorrow and and get started. <laughs> so. But all right, guys, we are going to wrap it up. I want to thank everybody for joining. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button uh, on your way out. Uh, and subscribe to the newsletter if you want to. And we appreciate Definitely. all the love we've been receiving, man. The, the chat is just constantly going. You guys are now waiting for us to start the show. So Definitely. You guys have any topics? The email is below. Or questions, you know, reach out on Facebook or Instagram or whatever you guys like. You know, it's, 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 we're definitely doing this for you guys. So, yeah, we're just having fun, guys. So, any insight would be great. Bun bunch of dank guys, just some dank guys. <laughs> we do have a lot of, uh, kind of, uh, guests coming on this show. So, stay tuned for that, guys. It's, uh, I don't want to say who, but uh, we got I think we're nice doing it twice a month. So we're going to do two guests and then two topics and then two guests. Yep. So, so. thanks guys for watching. That's Brian, wanna... RPS Dent Repair, MySpace, YouTube, <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, on it all. 
you know, musically now. So if you guys want to dance with me, let me know. I can't, I can't do that. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys, Chris Dillon's touch again. My email is at the bottom. If you guys want to send us anything, uh, and thanks for watching guys. And we'll see you on the next show. Peace guys.